Hi and welcome back. In this video, we will create our first ever data prop cluster and we will see what all options are available for configuration. So let's head over to the Google Cloud Console. And from this left menu, we will first go to the billing because before doing anything with our account, we'll have to link a billing account. So we will do this and select my billing account and then we'll say set the account now the billing is attached to my project now as you can see that there is 2100 rupees available for 91 days which roughly equates to uh 300 with that out of the way let us scroll down once again from the left menu to the big data section there you will find data prop First, we'll pin it so that it always appears on the top. And then from this data proc menu, select the cluster. Since we are using this API for the very first time, this API is not enabled. So Google Cloud will give you an option to enable it. Click on enable. This should take a couple of seconds and your API should be enabled. One thing to note that do add the billing to your account, do link the billing to your gcp account because if you have not billing and if your if the billing is not enabled for your account you won't be able to enable the api you will uh, see an error right uh, so for example i was seeing this error that the billing account is not found so that's why i had to enable the billing first uh, it might take somewhere around 30 to 60 seconds for this api uh, to be available in the meantime the uh, API has been enabled, so the create cluster option is now open. So hit create cluster, and you will see a lot of information over here. Now don't be baffled by that. This these options are divided into different different sections. So here we will set up the cluster. It says configuration of the nodes, customizing the cluster, security. So we'll start with the cluster setup. We'll start with the cluster name. So we will say my first cluster. It will ask you for the reason. Uh, it will by default be US, let it be US. Then it will ask for a cluster type. So you can create a single node cluster. You can create a standard cluster with one master and n workers. And you can even choose the high availability where you will have more than one master. In this case, three masters and n workers. So we will create a standard cluster with one master and n workers. We do not have any auto scaling policy attached to it. There is no versioning. Uh, the image type is 2.0 and Debian, which we might want to change. So here you can see with the image version 2.0, you get Spark 3.1. I am going to choose something of the sort of Spark 2.4. So I will choose Deb Ubuntu and uh, Spark 2.4, Hadoop 2.10. I will choose this version. All right. Now it says enable component gateway. We will cover this in uh, the later sections and we will enable some of, we can enable some of this, these optional components. We can have Jupyter Notebook. We can have Docker, we can have HBase, so on and so forth, but we are not going to touch them because we are creating a very first cluster. Uh, so we're not going to be bothered by that. And here we come to the node configuration. Now, uh, this is for this demo purpose, the configuration of a node does not really matter. But when it comes to the real world application, configuration of node is very, very important. It is one of the key tenets of uh of building or writing optimized spark jobs or running optimized spark workloads so right now as you can see there are so many machine families it's general purpose we have compute optimized we have memory optimized and we have gpus as well so the general purpose the difference is that in general purpose the ram to v core ratio is somewhere around 2.5 when it comes to compute optimized, we have more vCPUs uh, per gigabyte of memory. And when we talk about memory optimized, we have more uh, memory 
per VCP. So we're going to look at that. You can go to, uh, you can write GCP machine types on Google and it will open up a chart for you, uh, which will tell you what all different machine types are available, what all uh, CPU set each machine type uses. So here you can see E2 are general purpose, N2 are general purposes. You can see what all uh, different uh, use cases these uh, type of machines support. You can see the processor families which they support. So for the purpose of this demo, we will be using a general purpose N1 standard Two, uh, also a thing to note with the trial account is that you have an upper limit of eight V cores. So we cannot have, uh, you know, N1 standard 16 or N1 standard 8 and multiple nodes. So that is something that you need to uh, be aware of. So that's why we are choosing N1 standard 2 here. Uh, we will be choosing primary disk for now. We are not attaching any local SSDs, but you can also attach local SSDs. And this is a great optimization that we will cover in the later sections. And then this configuration was for the master node. Do remember that we have a one cross N uh, configuration, one master and N workers. So we have just configured the master and now we will do the same configuration for uh, worker nodes. So we are choosing N1 standard two for worker nodes as well. We are choosing two workers, similar setup. It is asking if you want any local SSDs. We don't want to have that. Then it asks the secondary workers, which are nothing but printable VMs, which we will talk about again in the later section. But just to give you a brief, printable VMs are a lot cheaper than the actual VMs. But these VMs can be taken away uh, anytime Google uh, has need for those VMs. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Then the shielded VM, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, but it does not matter at the moment. So here at the bottom, you will see the total uh, usage. Here we have two worker nodes. So that accounts for four V cores and total of 15 gigs of memory. But out of that, YARN will only get 12. So that is 80%. YARN will only get 12. Then it says customize the cluster. You can add the network configurations here. But at this moment, we're going to leave this to default because we're not worried about that. Do we want all the instances to have internal IP only? No, not at the moment. You have data prop meta store service as well, which is a latest addition. And as you can see, it is in beta. So we will cover this in the later sections as well. You have options to add cluster properties, initialization actions, custom metadata, scheduled deletion. Uh, scheduled deletion is a very good thing. You can tick that and say that after 30 minutes of inactivity, you would want to delete the cluster. This will save you, uh, this will save you money if your cluster is idle. Your, your cluster will be deleted. But do keep in mind that there is a caveat if you delete the cluster. So at the moment, I'm going to remove this and we will cover the deletion of the cluster and its implication in the latest video in this section. Then go to the managed security. We will uh, just say allow API access uh, in the same project. And that's pretty much it. We will hit create and this should create the cluster. Also here you can see the command line command to create one such cluster. So if I have to show you this is this cluster creation. We did it with uh, from the Google Cloud Console, we can do that from G Cloud command line tool as well. And here is the command for that. Uh, but for now, we will be uh, using the console only. And as you can see, our first cluster is in provisioning state. It will, and while it is provisioning, let us go to the detail page of this cluster, hit on the cluster name, click on the cluster name, it's a link. It will open up the page where you can see the different configurations. Here you can see the monitoring uh, charts loading up. Since there is no data, it says no data is available. You have jobs, you have VM instances. So as you can see, data proc is built over the Google's compute engine service where multiple compute, ing compute engine instances or what we call uh, IAAS VMs are provisioned and uh, a cluster is formed. So at this time, the VMs are in place, but the software, the Spark, the Hadoop and all the other things are being configured for you right now. 
then if you go to the configuration page you will see all the options that you have filled up and then there is a web interface it will tell you how you can connect to the web interface and we will see how we can connect to it uh, right now the component gateway is uh, disabled that can be enabled as well and also you can use uh, you can follow these uh, instructions to open up the cluster UI, the YARN UI, the Spark UI. We will see it in a moment. Uh, let the cluster come to the running state. Hit refresh. Sometimes this UI gets stuck uh, in case there are a lot of, uh, in case the network is slow or there are a lot of clusters to be loaded. So it is still in provisioning state. I will pause the video here and I will come back when this cluster is in running state. It should not take more than two to three minutes. So it's in running state. I'll see you in the next video where we'll be submitting a job on this cluster. See you then. Bye-bye.